Good morning. I am Pastor Prelo, the pastor of Christ United Methodist Church here in Baltimore City. And we here at Christ United Methodist Church would like to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship service. Whether you are joining us on YouTube, Facebook, or you are logged into our Zoom, we thank you for taking the opportunity to worship with us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I pray that something, whether said or sung this morning, that you are blessed by our worship service this morning. Amen. And once again, thank you for joining us here at Christ United Methodist Church in Baltimore City. God bless you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord with us today. He's just been so good to us. church family and friends let all hearts pray most good gracious and precious Lord we give you thanks and praise we worship you we magnify and adore you you are God and God alone you are our alpha and our omega the beginning and the ending you are our rejoice we thank you father for all all that you've done. We thank you for shelter, for food to eat, for clothes on our backs. 
We thank you for all that you've done that's how you watched over us and that no matter what happens, you're always with us. We thank you, Father, that in these days of uncertainty that you are our stable rock and that we know, dear Father, that no matter what happens, that you will be there. We pray, dear Father, not only for our family members, those who may be in hospital rooms or those who may be in convalescent homes, Father, but we also pray, dear Father, for those who are going out every day, working, dear Father, struggling. We pray for those, Father, who are going out every day and taking care of our kids, whether they are homeschooling or or, or they're teaching or, or administrating. We pray for all of those people, Father, that you would strengthen them and guide them. We pray, dear Father, for those who are struggling today, Father, who don't have a job and who don't know where that next meal is going to come from. We pray, dear Father, that you would send your healing hands, that you would send help. And that you would send encouragement. That you said that we were not to worry about what to eat or what to drink or what to wear. That you would take care of us. We ask you, dear Father, that you would remind us that as a part of the body of Christ, that we are to live together in peace. And that we should let you control our thoughts. And that you don't leave us and you don't, you've never forsaken us. And that you are merciful and that the grace that you have given us, we are saved and we're set free. We thank you, dear Father, that we can rejoice even in our weakness, even in our sadness and in our uncertainties. We can rejoice. We, we can rejoice because we know you and that we understand that you will never Leave us so we're never alone. And that's a good thing. Thank you, dear Father, for all of the things that you've done and all that you're doing. We thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we magnify you and adore you. And our souls say amen. Again, we just want to thank you for being with us this morning at Christ United Methodist Church. We just want to thank you um, for that. It is given time. It is time for us to give back to God a portion of that which God has graciously and extravagantly blessed us with. We here at Christ United Methodist Church, we want to first thank you for what you have already given to this ministry. And we want to thank you for just sowing a seed into this ministry. And we thank God because ministry still goes on. We thank God for our outreach ministry that's still out in the community and making that impact for the kingdom of God. Here at Christ United Methodist Church, there is four ways in which you can give. You can go to our website, at www.christumc2113.org. That's www.christumc2113.org. You can also download the app Givelify. You can download the app Givelify on your smartphone and look for Christ United Methodist Church, Baltimore City. You can also text to give. You can text the word give, that's G-I-V-E, to 410-632-6452. Again, text the word give to 410-632-6452. And also, there is still snail mail. You can still use mail. You can um, mail your check to 2005 East Chase Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. That's Christ United Methodist Church, 2005 East Chase Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. And you can write your checks out to Christ 
United Methodist Church. We thank you already for your giving. Let us pray. God, we just thank you, God, for the many gifts in which you have already given us. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, we here at Christ United Methodist Church, that we will be good stewards over that which you have trusted in our hands. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.
Good morning once again, and thank you for worshiping with us this morning. I pray you enjoyed our worship service thus far. Let's thank God virtually for Pastor Wayne and our pandemic worship team. If you would give God a hand clap of praise, just give God a hand clap of praise for their faithfulness. They have been faithful in the pandemic and we thank God for them. Once again, I just thank you for worshiping with us this morning. I believe that there is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. God, it's in your name we come this morning. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy and how merciful and gracious you have been to us. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we may have an encounter with you this morning. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. My brothers and sisters, this month we have been in the book of Habakkuk. If you have not been following us, I encourage you to visit our YouTube and Facebook pages and look at our past worship services. Go back and see how God ministered to us through the book of Habakkuk. This morning, we are actually in the third chapter. Would you get your Bibles? Um, would you go and get your Bibles and join me in Habakkuk, the third chapter? So let me read Habakkuk, the third chapter, and I'm going to start with the 16th, 16th verse, verse 16 through 19. And the word of God reads as thus, though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, Though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. Again, that's Habakkuk, the third chapter, verse 16 through 19, verse, verse 16 through 18, verse 18 says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. My brothers and sisters, I want to preach this morning from the topic, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the book of Habakkuk invites us into this long dialogue between Habakkuk and God. Habakkuk has this concern about the lack of justice for God's people. Violence and corruption were prevalent in the land. A land known by God's name was disregarding the law of God. Habakkuk must have pondered on the state of the nation. From reading chapter one, it appears as though he was bewildered that God was silent regarding the evil that was prevalent in the land. The people have not lived up to the vocation of being God's people. Concerned, Habakkuk initiates this conversation with God. Habakkuk says to God, why do you force me to look at evil, stare trouble in the face day after day? Habakkuk initiated this conversation with God and asked God the question, why? My brothers and sisters, have you ever initiated a conversation with God, asking God the question why? I'm not talking about just going to God with fluffy words, but I'm talking about going to God with the issues of your heart, going to God and saying, God, what's up with this? I don't understand what you're doing in my life in this season. Have you ever initiated a conversation with 
with God, concerned about God's action or lack of reaction to your situation? Have you ever initiated a conversation with God? Have you ever knocked on God's door? God, we need to talk about this situation. Have you ever initiated a conversation with God? God, why are you not concerned about the welfare of your people? Habakkuk initiated this conversation with God. And my brothers and sisters, God responds to Habakkuk, but not in the way Habakkuk wants. Not in the way in which Habakkuk wanted God to respond. And my brothers and sisters, God has a history of responding to his people in a way they do not expect. God replied that he will send the Babylonians in to invade the land, a land given to them by God. Why would God give them the land and then allow the Babylonians to invade the land? Why would God open this door just to slam it in their face? Why would God turn a celebration into a repast? Why would God give you the blessing only to take it away? My brothers and sisters, we all have felt like God had given us the blessing only for the door to slam front, only for the door, the door to slam in front of us. Why would God give me the job only for me to get fired? Just got the job before the pandemic hit and then the pandemic lost the job. My brothers and sisters, Habakkuk did not understand what God was doing. What God would do would go against who he believed God to be. He believed God to be a fair and just God, but what God would do did not look like justice to Habakkuk. Sending the Babylonians in to invade the land could not be justice. God, do you not know what they would do to your people? My brothers and sisters, in chapter 2, we are invited to listen to God's response or God's second response to Habakkuk. There, God encourages Habakkuk to write the vision. Regardless of what it looks like, Habakkuk, in spite of the fact that you cannot see what I'm doing in this season, although you do not understand the plan I am laying out before you, Habakkuk, although the people look defeated with the naked eye, Habakkuk, there is still a vision for the people of God, and it will come to pass in its appointed time. Because my plans are not your plans, and my ways are not your ways, what looks like defeat to you is victory to me. Somebody need to hear that this morning. What looks like defeat to you is victory to God. What looks like a setback to you is a setup for God. What appears to be no action is action to God, because Sometimes, uh, my brothers and sisters, God does not work in the forefront of our lives. God told Habakkuk that he he was not blind to the sins of the people and that a time had been set aside in which judgment and recompense for these for their actions would be made. But God's vision, my brothers and sisters, is for an appointed time. And it speaks to the end of a thing. God encourages Habakkuk in his faith by saying the righteous live by faith. The enemy is puffed up and his desires are not upright. But the righteous, the people of God, those who trust in God, those who have the heart of God, those who seek the face of God, live by faith. Now we find ourselves in chapter 3. After all of Habakkuk's complaints to God, and hearing God's explanations and explanation and vision for the people of God, we experience a shift in Habakkuk's disposition. 
My brothers and sisters, we are invited into Habakkuk's prayer. And my brothers and sisters, if you have an opportunity to hear a person pray, their prayer says a lot about their relationship with God. It tells you if they have a relationship with God, because if I have a relationship with God, I I, I would not be afraid to, to approach God. If I'm familiar with God, I would not be afraid to talk to God. If I'm used to having a conversation with God, I would not be afraid to stand before God. A person's prayer says a lot about the person and their relationship with God. And in this prayer, Habakkuk sees hope. There's a shift in the way Habakkuk now communicates with God. He thanks God in response to God's vision. In this chapter, we learn from Habakkuk's prayer that Habakkuk is now seeking revival for God's people. Habakkuk understand that God can bring revival because of what he has heard about God. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Lord, repeat them in our day, in our time. Make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. In his prayer, he expresses the need for immediate revival. He wants God to act not in the future, but he wants God to bring revival. Now, God, I heard what you can do. Do it again, God, and do it now. Do now what you did in the past. God, deliver us like you delivered your people in the past. Work among us as you worked among your people in the past. God, as you bring your wrath on your people, please don't forget mercy. Mercy, my brothers and sisters, where would you be without mercy? The hymn writer said it like this, mercy. See, for mercy there is grace, and grace was free. Have you ever had to cry out to God for mercy? Granted, God give it to us every day, but have you, my brothers and sisters, have your life ever been in such a place where you have to cry out to God? God, have mercy on me. Where we here today, my brothers and sisters, we we are here today because God has been merciful towards us. Woke up this morning because God felt like being merciful. But I thank God for being merciful in my life. Somebody ought to say, God, have mercy on me. Then my brothers and sisters, in verses 3, through 16, Habakkuk stand in awe of God and give God an account of God's activity, touching events of the earliest periods of Hebrew history and looking forward to God's judgment on both Judah and Babylon in God's appointed time. Sometimes my brothers and sisters it's simply good to remind God of what God has done. Sometimes you need to play back to God, God's tape in your life. God, I remember when you saved me. I remember when you delivered me. I remember, God, how you lifted me up, God, when I was in my midnight hours. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, it's simply good to remind God of what God has done. And remember, God said to Habakkuk in chapter two, the just shall live by faith. When we get to verses 17 through 18 in chapter three, we see a picture of what operating in faith looks like. Verse 17 through, through, through 18 sums up Habakkuk's faith 
in God. All of his complaining has come down to these three verses, our focal verses for today. Habakkuk now understand that God's justice does not always come in our time, but it does come. Check this out, my brothers and sisters. Nothing has changed about Habakkuk's situation. Habakkuk is still waiting on the justice of God. Habakkuk is still waiting on God to react. But in his writing, he penned these words. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the flow fold and there's no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord of my strength, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer and makes me tread upon the heights. My brothers and sisters, the scripture says, though the fig tree does not blossom according to 1 Kings 4 and 25. The fig tree was a symbol of peace, prosperity, and protection. Although peace, prosperity, and protection are no longer in place, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, I talked to Pastor Parker and I asked him about the word yet. And I asked him because he majored in English and taught it for a few years. And he shared with me that yet is a conjunction and conjunctions connect to independent clauses. They can stand on their own without the conjunction as a complete sentence. In this text, yet is functioning as the negating conjunction and negating conjunctions cancel out everything that proceeds in the sentence so, so that all is important for the reader is to know all that is important for the reader to know is what comes after yet. So if we impose that rule to this text, Habakkuk tells what is important for us to know is that I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. Why? Because my exaltation of God is not dependent on my outward circumstances. Somebody need to hear that this morning. Your exaltation of God is not dependent on your outward circumstances. It's not dependent upon what's going on around me. It's not dependent upon my bank account. It's not dependent upon if things are going my way or not. It's not even dependent upon the fig tree. It's dependent upon who created the tree. It is dependent upon God. Why? Because I have victory in God. As the young people would say that we been been and the history tells me that God is a deliverer. History tells me that God is a healer. History tells me that God walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. History tells me that yea, through I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will feel no evil. History tells me that the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade at my right hand. The sun, shall, the sun shall not strike me by day, nor the moon by night. History tells me that God is a will in the middle of a will. History tells me that God will never leave me or forsake me. History tells me that God will be there with me in the midnight hours of my life. History tells me that God speaks to the storms of my life. And when God speaks, the storms, the storm has to be still. History tells me, my brothers and sisters, that God will be with me, that he's a father to the fatherless. He's a mother to the motherless. History tells me, my brothers and sisters, that when we are faced with life difficulties, when life have us down, when we do not understand the things of God, when we have a hard time accepting the will of God, when we don't understand why justice does not come right away when the circumstances of life uh, are going against the future plans of my life. Uh, when I'm living in a dry season, nothing is producing in my life. Uh, when I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. Uh, when depression has hit my door. Uh, when the odds are stacked against me. Uh, when the doctor is giving me a bad report. Uh, yet, uh, 
Somebody needs to say yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and the God of my salvation. Yet I will trust in God. Yet I will hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yet my brothers and sisters, in spite of what's going on, somebody, my brothers and sisters, need to begin to give God some glory because God has been good to you. God has been faithful. My brothers and sisters, and if you look back over your life and begin to think things over, I believe that you got a testimony and you need to tell somebody, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and the God of my salvation, the one who saved me, the one who delivered me, the one who set me free. Somebody need to give God some glory this morning because we serve an awesome God and he's worthy. I said he's worthy. I said he's worthy to be praised. Somebody this morning, my brothers and sisters, need to shout hallelujah. Stand on your feet no matter where you are and begin to give God some glory because God is worthy. I said he's worthy. God is worthy to be praised. Don't sit down on God. You need to get up and give God some praise. Don't sit down on God because God has not sat down on you. I know my brothers and sisters that you got a testimony. I know my brothers and sisters that you got history with God. Why do I know? Because you're here this morning. He woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Somebody, my brothers and sisters, need to give God some glory because he's worthy. I said he's worthy. I said he's worthy to be praised. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord and the God of my salvation. Yet will I trust him. Yet though he slay me, I will trust him. Yet no matter what's going on, I will trust in the God of my salvation. Somebody ought to give God some glory this morning because God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy of all of our praise. God is worthy of the honor and the glory. God is worthy. My brothers and sisters, no matter where you are, won't you just write in the chat that God is worthy of the honor and all the praise. Come on, let's give God some virtual praise this morning. I don't know where you are. Maybe you got to be driving down your street, down the street, and you decided to just log into our Zoom, or you decided to just cut on Facebook, or you decided to look at YouTube. No matter where you are, I want to say just, just pour over on the side, just pull over on the side of the street, and just begin to give God some glory, even in your living room. Why don't you just stand on your feet and begin to give God some glory? I know you got something that you can worship God with, that you can worship God for I know you got something in your life that you be, that you that you can begin to rejoice in God not because of God the trouble that I'm going through right now but because I know God that you're here with me I know God in the name of Jesus God that you're in the midst of this with me I might not see you I probably can't trace you God but I know God that you promised me that you never leave me or forsake me God you promise if I trust in you and lean out on my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge you. You said that you would direct my path. Somebody need to give God some glory this morning because I know there was a time in your life when your body was wrapped in pain and God delivered you and God healed you. I know there was a time when you probably didn't think you were going to make it to the next day but God stepped in right on time. Somebody ought to give God some glory. Somebody ought to give God some glory because God is worthy to be praised. My brothers and sisters, as we travel through this book of Habakkuk this month, one thing I can say 
about Habakkuk that in the midst of all Habakkuk's complaining, in the midst of Habakkuk going back and forth with God, even not understanding the plan of God, which sometimes we don't understand the plan of God in our lives. One thing I can say about Habakkuk, guess what? Habakkuk took his complaint to God. He took it to God and he laid everything at the feet of God. God, I don't understand what you're doing in this season. God, what you're doing just don't make sense to me. God, why are you not moving like I think you should move? God, I don't understand what's up. Guess what? He laid it all at the feet of God. And he dialogued with God. My brothers and sisters, if that's you this morning, and you in this season, of your life where you don't understand what's going on. You don't understand the plans of God. I want you to just lay it at the feet of God. Why don't this morning you take it to God? Take everything to God. Take it to God. God, I don't understand what you're doing. God, I don't know what's happening in my life right now. I don't, I just don't understand this. My brothers and sisters, take it to God. And I guarantee you that if you listen closely, God will begin to have this conversation with you. And the hymn writer says it like this, and we will understand it better by and by. My brothers and sisters, let us have a word of prayer. God, it's in your name that we come. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for who you are in our lives. We thank you, God, for your word that has healing power. It has deliverance power. God, your word that sanctifies us and washes us, God. Your word that reminds us of who you are. Your word, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word. And God, you promised that your word will not come back void. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that your word will, will go forth and do what it's planned to do. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, continue to encourage our hearts, God. And we thank you, God, for the encouragement that you have given us this month in the book of Habakkuk. God, you have made crooked paths straight for us. God, you have made some things clear for us. God, you strengthen us this month. God, you, you, you stretch our faith this month. God, you helped us to trust in you more this month. God, and we say thank you. We thank you, God, because you are all knowing, all seeing God. And we thank you, God, that you know and sees everything about us. So we just like to say thank you. And I pray God in the name of Jesus for that person under the sound of my voice who do not know you. They don't have a relationship with you. They have never surrendered their lives unto you. I pray God in the name of Jesus for that person. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that they will come today to know you in a real and awesome way. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, just be with them, encourage them, uplift them. Let them know, God, that you are right there with them, that you never left them, God. Let them know, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you're drawing them closer to you. I pray for that person. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, they will come to Heavenly Father and yield themselves up to you, saying to you, God, what must I do to be saved? God, and once they know, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, they would accept your son, Jesus, the Christ. It's in your name I pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, 
if you are joining us this morning and you do not know God as your the pro, God, you do not know God as your Savior. You 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 do not know Jesus the Christ as prophet, priest, and king over your life. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. I want to invite you into that relationship. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be set free. I want to offer you that salvation today. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God that, that, that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says that you shall be saved. Because with the mouth one makes a confession unto salvation and with the heart one believes. So if that's you this morning, my brothers and sisters, I invite you to Jesus. If you would just repeat after me, God, I believe Jesus the Christ to be your son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins, that I may have a right to the tree of life. And I accept the salvation that was offered on the cross. I accept that salvation today. God, I thank you. Come into my heart and live with me. I thank you this morning for salvation. It's in your name I pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if that's you, I pray God in the name of Jesus that you would connect to our church. And I will invite you to connect to Christ United Methodist Church. If that's you, if you would just write connect in the comments, just write the word connect and one of us will get in touch with you. Or you can call the church at 410-732-5600. Or you can email us at cumchurch at verizon.net and we will get back in touch with you. If that's you this morning. My brothers and sisters, once again, I just thank you for joining us this morning for our worship service. I pray that you were blessed by God's word. The Bible tells us that thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will hide God's word in your heart. I pray in the name of Jesus as you go about this week that you will be encouraged by God's word. And you will be able to say, as Habakkuk said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord my God, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, my God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the grace of the, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you today, henceforth, and forevermore. All the people of God say, Amen. God bless you. And I'll see you 10 a.m. on next Sunday. God bless you.